Welcome to Dentists, Puns, and Money. I'm your host, Sean Terrell. My guest on today's show is Dr. Paul Goodman, otherwise known as Dr. Nacho. Dr. Paul is a dentist and partner of a group practice in Mercer County, New Jersey, but he may be best known for founding the Dental Nachos Facebook group. We cover a number of topics in our conversation, including Dr. Nacho's latest venture, Dentist Job Connect, which helps dentist job seekers connect with dental practice owners. As a reminder, you can get all the information discussed in today's conversation by visiting our website, that's dentistexit.com. From there, you can click on the podcast tab. And if you are a dentist interested in taking the first step to find your eventual exit from active practice to financial independence, whether that's three months or 30 years away, let's have a conversation. You can schedule a discovery call with me by going to dentistexit.com and clicking on the schedule meeting tab that's in the top right corner of the homepage. And with that introduction, I hope you enjoy my conversation with Dr. Paul Goodman. All right, Dr. Paul Goodman, Dr. Nacho, welcome to Dentist Puns and Money. I'm excited to hear your story. Thank you for joining us. I'm oh, glad to be here. Love sharing with this stuff. Give you a lot of credit for producing these things to share information with your audience. I think it's awesome. So the first place I have to go is Dental Nachos, Dr. Nacho. Where does that story or that name come from? I was just posting because we're almost past 40,000 members in our Facebook group. In 2017, in February, I was sitting on my, with my wife. Uh, the wives usually have better ideas than uh, anyone. So I said, I'm going to start a Facebook group to talk about implants and practice management. What should we call it? You know, and I'm a broker, I'm a dentist, I'm a speaker. So I love Mexican food. I worked as a Mexican at a Mexican restaurant when I was 19. I learned a lot about systems, an amazing corporate place called Casa Lapita. I go to Elvez in Philadelphia with my family all the time. So my wife thought dental nachos would be a good name. And while I do like marketing, it wasn't intentional, but nachos are kind of like the golden retriever puppy of appetizers. John, so when I started the group, people were just posting pictures of nachos, which is bringing a lot of happiness to the, uh, to the table. So it kind of got this fun attention, but you know, the story is, you know, nachos are meant to be shared, but they can get messy, meant to be shared amongst friends. So I think the dental community at large really needs to have more fun, but more fun, more friends, but also more conversations that can get a little spicy with a foundation of respect. So that's how dental nachos came about to really help dentists feel like they're a part of something, feel bonded together, learn about the four major decisions of finding a job, buying a practice, hiring an associate and selling your practice and the dashes in between. You know, there's that poem, you know, well, how do you live your dash from birth date to death date, which is a poignant poem, but it has a lot of meaning to it. You know, so where do these dashes mean for dentists? How do you navigate these decisions clinically, business, leadership? And uh, I think dentistry sees more of that. And I'm happy to be part of the solution providing it. I think you said it, but was it 2017 or 2007 in terms of 2017? What... Okay, so yeah. a pretty large following and a relatively short amount of time as we record this in early 2022. Yeah, I'm mean, really proud. Of, you know, we've we've expanded beyond the Facebook community to Instagram to a text message community, but I really uh, love Facebook for conversations. Facebook really is the only platform I believe that you can have these group conversations around a post on a clinical case, around a post on your career. I do love Instagram, but there's sort of a lot of applauding and rah-rah on Instagram. There's nothing wrong with that, but I love the Facebook community for dentists because you have people coming in and commenting and sharing like, hey, I might've done it different or that's what happens to me in my practice or have you ever tried this? So it really has this group mentality of coming to people's help, you know, helping people, um, inserting advice. And I encourage dentists to speak up, you know, like, it is sort of the new way to show like, you know, to find a job out there or hire an associate or buy a practice, you have to be known in the community. And this is a virtual community. You can literally sit on your couch and get your face out there on Facebook. So uh, I, I really enjoy doing that. So this all began with you being a, a practicing clinical dentist. And that's something you, as I understand, still continue to do to this day. Uh, maybe just talk about the evolution for sure. you know, starting out as, as as a younger dentist and and building your practice and kind of how you have added uh, a lot of different things to your world to for sure sure in my words uh, provide a lot of value and and resources out there for other practicing dentists in the in the dental community. Thanks. I'll, I'll use a Dr. Dennis Tarn. I was one of the best dentists on w w with regard to dental implants on planet Earth. He's one of my uh, idols. I went to hear him speak and he has this great quote, which I put in my presentations, I'm going to speak on implants tonight. And the summary of it is when I go and leave my family and give a presentation, when I go talk to dentists and teams, 
when I help that one dentist, they go and help thousands of patients. And that really is meaningful to me. So what I share is there's plenty of dentists to help patients, but I want to be on the team to help dentists help patients. So my evolution, you know, of finishing dental school in 2002 from Penn, doing a multi-year GPR at Albert Einstein, Philadelphia. I started a study club called the Rising Dentist Study Club in 2005, where we would meet, talk about topics, have speakers. I tried to get sponsors to give us free food. And the mission of the study club, Sean, was, hey, if dentists could get along early in their career, maybe they wouldn't hate each other later. What bothers me, dental school has this dental student hunger games mentality. I have a three-year-old that lives in my house. I don't know if you have a three-year-old. Four. Four. Yeah, they're insane people. They're up, yeah. they're down. I mean, when someone says kids are nice, I'm like, fine, bring one Easter candy to two, three-year-olds, see how nice they are then, right? So I wanted dentists to get along early in their career. So that was part of my evolution of getting into speaking. I love doing that in implants and practice management, bringing people together. Over time, from 2005 to 2017, I pretty much worked three or four days a week in private practice in our group practice. Much my dad started, I worked with him for years until unfortunately passed away, but amazing dad and dentist. I work with my brother. I role model collaboration. We have eight dentists working in our two locations with specialists. What that does when you have other dentists working with you, so if anyone's listening, is it gives you schedule flexibility. The more dentists you have working with you, the less money you make from dentistry but the more schedule flexibility you have. Hmm. So it allowed me to start being a broker, helping dentists buy practices, helping start dentist job connect, doing dental notches. So now I'm doing clinical dentistry one day a week in my practice, really planning implant cases, but I'm kind of working eight out of seven days a week. So, you know, I've never worked more in my life total, but less in dentistry. So I used to have this kind of quaint three or four days a week, speak, do this. Now I really enjoy this entrepreneurial journey. I have nobody to blame but myself. I'm very self-aware. One of my favorite people is Gary Vaynerchuk. I'm an incredibly self-aware person. I've created these Frankensteins. I have to run them. I love running them. You know, doing some of this can be uh, exhausting, as you could imagine. But I really get a lot of fulfillment out of people writing me say, "Hey, I wish I had dental nachos early in my career. Hey, I wish Dennis Job Connect exists. I mean, just I'm a big story fan. The story is the star." There's a dentist leaving dental school in two months who's getting a job for over $250,000 a year in Illinois because of Dentist Job Connect. He would have never found this job. So I put two people together, practice owner who wants an associate and this dental student who's willing to move to a far off land with his family. It's the right move for him. And the only way these two people know each other is through our work at dental job, Dentist Job Connect and Dental Nachos. So that is what really inspires me. So yeah, Dentist Job Connect is the newest venture for you, founded, as I understand it, in 2021. Uh, maybe some broad strokes there would be helpful for the audience so, in terms of what it is and, and who it helps. I love talking about story. So de- my company is like real nachos. You get toppings, right? Guac, chicken, cheese, but everybody likes one topping, right? In general, it's a lot like guacamole, right? Chipotle does a whole thing on the guacs extra. Gary Goldman, if you don't know him as a comedian, but he's hilarious. He always talks like, I feel rich when I have the extra money for guac at Chipotle. So what I found was, you know, I do things on online CE, right? But a lot of companies are doing that. Spears doing that. My friend Lincoln Harris. We do great online CE. We have a platform called Nacho Flix, but a lot of companies are doing that. I've started this patient communication thing. A lot of people are doing that. But what I found is Dennis Job Connect, that topic, seems to be the biggest pain. And the reason is dentists are graduating with enormous amounts of debt, which I think is a huge problem, both financially and emotionally. Yep. How do they find where to go after dental school? I find this nacho nacho. And dental school charges $500,000 to get this degree, gives zero useful information on how to find a job to pay off that degree. Business school, way better. Law school, way better. I'm sure they have chat doctors, way better. Doctors have to go to residencies and follow around bigger, stronger doctors. So what I found is Dentist Job Connect has emerged as the most attention getting topic So we really have segmented that and we have a whole platform for it, a separate website. And it just seems to be the thing that dentists are most concerned with. We have exhausted practice owners and we have dental students and new dentists need jobs. So if I can bring them together, I really can solve what I think is the biggest problem in dentistry. And that's dentists working together. So you mentioned how dentists coming out of dental school need to find a really good job right away because of the pressure of those student loan payments. Uh, we're going to assume going to be due six months after they they finish graduation at this point. We'll see <laughs> what legislation right, exactly. changes as we record yes. this. But uh, maybe speak to that a little bit more because there's just not a lot of, with that pressure of the student loan repayment is one, one pressure. There's not a lot of margin for error in getting it right. wrong for the dentist coming out of school. And, and how does 
uh, Dennis Job Connect work to yeah. help solve that. Yeah, you were mentioning music before. I'm not a huge, huge music. I don't know music quite as well as you do. My brother's a big music fan, but there's that song like Mind on My Money. So it's I say it's money and morale. So these smart people went through four years of dental school. Their friends, when I was in dental school, you know what my friends were doing? They were at business meetings. They were at networking events. They were standing in the clothes that they wore at 7 a.m. with a glass of wine at 10 p.m. talking to someone who's worth eight figures. So most normal people, business, uh, HR, they are in the real world networking, developing relationships. And you know, we're at dental school. We're in a basement burning ourselves with wax, studying for tests that are meaningless. And I say this in a fun and funny way. We become very, 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 very weird. We are not interacting with our people older than us. We're in this school mentality. So when we come out and start looking for jobs, we have pressure on money, but also our morale. We just spent four years learning this thing. Is it going to be a positive environment? There's some things going on in the de- private practice dental space. Dentists not getting paid, dentists being mistreated. There's not a lot of good industry regulation. So I do Dentist Job Connect to connect dentists with options. So both A, they can make money, but more importantly, they can boost their morale. This is their first or second job out of dental school. And imagine investing four years of your life doing this, all the money, all the time. And now you're in a place where you're just super unhappy. That can be, you know, in a poignant way, we have problems with depression. We have problems with dentists dying by suicide. We have problems with people leaving the profession. So what I'm striving to do is to create a platform for connection. And it's not perfect. When someone goes, do you vet every candidate? I go, no, I do not. You want to know their favorite color, Sean? You got to ask them on the interview, right? Is this practice owner the best at doing veneers? A, I don't know if there's any rankings on that. And B, you got to get out there and ask them. So I've modeled it after care.com. During the pandemic, my wife and I, someone came to us. On, we we're sitting on the couch and Morgan came to us and said, hey, Paul and Mary, I got to tell you something. Now, I don't know how your life's gone, Sean, but I've never heard something good at the end of that statement. Have you? Hey, your stomach usually drops when you hear that, right? Yeah. So Morgan's looking at us and goes, hey, guys, uh, I just want to let you know that I grew up in Philadelphia. I finished college. I've been here for a long time and I want to move to San Diego and see what's out there. And I say, oh, man, Morgan, San Diego is closed. You have to stay here and be our babysitter forever. So I wish that was the case. But Morgan, who works with me at Del Nacho, she left Philadelphia in June of 2021 moved to San Diego and left us with an enormous problem. Morgan took care of our kids three days a week, the homeschooling stuff, all the challenges. So how did we get a new Morgan? You got to go on care.com. You got to ask people that you know. So Dennis Job Connect is the care.com out there of trying to connect awesome people to help practice. Or sometimes you need a babysitter for your practice. Sometimes you need someone for six months. Sometimes you need a partner. But if you are a parent who has had a babysitter leave that you loved, you know that feeling. And it is a difficult feeling. There's always, I think, say, Sean, this is my quote. Sometimes the best thing to happen to someone else is the worst thing to happen to you, right? <laughs> I mean, she comes and says, hey, guys, I'm going to San Diego. And I got to pretend I'm happy. I'm like, good for you, right? When inside, I'm like, just stay here and be our babysitter. So that's the thing about good people is they leave for better things sometimes. Yeah. And yeah, and, and dentistry and in, uh, I can relate to the childcare dilemma as well. It's yeah. funny. It sounds like we're both in a, in a similar stage uh, of life. We have a short amount of time today, but you mentioned something. Well, before I even go there, let me back up. How does Dentist Job Connect work? How much does it cost and how does it work? You mentioned- Oh, thanks that, for asking. That, right now, uh, we've made it free for job seekers. So if you're looking for a job, you can go to dentistjobconnect.com, make yourself a free profile. You can connect with all the practices on there for free. We are going to experiment with a, like a premium service for job seekers, but right now it's free. For practice owners, and there's three types of candidates, a solo dentist who's exhausted and stressed, a group practice like my brother and I who's looking to expand, or a corporate or DSO that has 30 practices and are all these associates. Those are our three candidates. They can advertise on the platform at the time of this recording, like $1,000 for 90 days. It's not a guarantee for success. It's an awesome opportunity. I've been part of the headhunter model where people will pay you ten dollars to $20,000 per position. There's nothing wrong with that model. We have recruiters on there, but we're trying to make an affordable solution for all, whether you are a 30 practice, $30 million group, or you're just a guy or a female dentist doing $750,000 and you just need part-time help. So I'm really trying to make it fun and affordable, awesome opportunity for anyone's on there. So that's the simplistic way it works. Practice owners pay to advertise. Job seekers can do it all for free. 
And what sort of information are you asking for or having candidates, both practice yeah, owners great. and associates, what are they putting in there to try to narrow it down yeah. to look for alignment with each it's other? Really great. We're trying to give enough details to move people forward to talk to each other. So compensation, a range of compensation. This position, one hundred and fifty dollars to $200,000 a year. This position, full-time or part-time. This position requires you to do root canals and extractions, but not a tremendous amount more from that because my dentist people, we actually learn the wrong way, Sean. We become overly detail-focused and we want to know too many details before we go on the date, before, before we meet the friend. We would all tell our child, hey, does this kid live in our area and also kind of like soccer? You should meet them. Then if you meet each other and you don't get along, just don't meet again. But dentists get into analysis paralysis. So we intentionally just offer very, a framework of details from the job seeker. We don't really offer much, but I tell them the more they put on their profile, you know, if they say, I really like placing implants, that would be attractive, right? If someone said to me for French, there was Frenchster.com. I think that should come back. If I was trying to meet another dad friend. He goes, I like comedy and eating nachos. I go, well, I want to meet this Sean guy. That's what I like too, right? <laughs> If another dad said, I like hiking and whitewater rafting, I go, I am an indoorsy person like Jim Gaffigan, right? Jim Gaffigan. So, so we are intentionally trying to make it fun, but really do the anti-dentist thing of not a tremendous amount of details before you meet in person, because meeting in person or on Zoom or talking on the phone is the magic to move forward. It's, it's interesting that you say that. And as someone who is involved with several businesses, I'm guessing that's a lesson that you've gotten uh, better at practicing yourself because, yeah. you know, the key to any business is just, you know, get 60 or 70% there, test it, iterate from yeah. there. And is that the same methodology that you formed? Oh, I love on? it. I mean, I listen to our podcast. There was this company, I don't know if you've heard of it, but um, and initially they were sending out emails and they were spending so much time on their email marketing to make sure it was perfect. They were sending out like one email a day to their followers, but it was perfect. What they found over time was they could send out emails with misspellings. They could send out emails with broken links. They were sending like eight or nine emails a day and they were growing their audience. So when they got out of their own way and started doing that, they grew. I'm not sure if you heard of this company. It's called Netflix. Okay. So Netflix, when you listen to the founder, he tells this story early on about how he had to get out of his own way of perfection. And there is no such thing as perfection. So it's like, is this dentist near you? Needs a job full time. That's enough. Talk to each other. I have a conversation. Yeah. So one thing that I wanted to hit on uh, in our time that we have uh, that you mentioned at the very beginning before we hit record was the four major decisions that all dentists face. And this, they're pretty big ones. And you had some thoughts on that. When you go to a dentist office, they give you a treatment plan. Let's say you say you're going to need to get your teeth clean, two fillings, three crowns and an implant. Well, dentists, how do they treat and plan their career? We're talking about this 30 year journey, this 30 year marathon. So finding your first job, buying your first practice, hiring your first associate and selling your only practice. While they're entrepreneurial minded dentists, if you have a hundred dentists in a room and say, how many practices do you own? Eight out of 10 are going to say one, right? So most dentists own one practice. So how do they make good decisions? How do they make good help? And the dashes in between, you know, we talk about live your, that cone, live your dash from your birthday to your death date, the impact that you have. Mine might not be quite as poignant or emotional, but it was like, how do you find your first job at your first job? How do you succeed? When do you leave that job? Do you ever leave that job? When you go to buy a practice, how do you look at the numbers? How do you not, you know, just how do you not let, you know, some dentists go, I don't like my job, Paul. I want to buy a practice. I go, what about just finding a better job, right? Like maybe find a better job first. So we really strive to give them the stuff dental school does not cover. There's plenty of material on clinical success. We have that, but business success, leadership success. Um, I don't know. If, I don't know if your field they talk about KPIs, but they talk about this in dentistry about key performance indicators. So there's only one KPI to being a dentist. Only one important one, right? Some people say it's profit or EBITDA. Boring. It's the number of times you feel like crying inside a day. How many times in your day do you feel like crying inside? And sometimes those crying inside things are not in your control. Patients cancel. Patients don't show up. Some of them are within your control. Did you buy a practice that was small and you thought you could build it up, but you never built it up? Let's make sure you don't make that mistake. So I always say we're here to increase success, decrease stress, and reduce that crying inside number. And something that I picked up from listening to your podcast, which I really like because I try to incorporate this with the financial planning I do with Dennis is, you know, start a little bit higher up the totem pole in terms of what do you want out of your life? Yeah. 
what's really important there and then work downwards to how dentistry or your career fits into that. It seems like you've kind of got the same message in a lot of your stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's also learn from people who've gone before you. This I always say is the best question for people, right? It's like, someone's like, would you have kids again? People have to say yes. You're just like a monster if you say no, right? But there's parents out there who are probably like, I'm not so sure I would have had three kids, but I can't just vote one off the island, right? <laughs> but this is a better question. And I think it's this, would you have made this decision at the same time again? How would you have made this decision differently? So, you know, I encourage young dentists to go to an older dentist with financial planning being like, would you have started saving for retirement sooner, right? Doesn't mean you don't have my money. And you say, yes, I would have done that, right? Mm -hmm. Would you have bought a practice sooner? Maybe some say no. Maybe say I bought a practice too soon and it was reactive and it wasn't the right practice. So ask people how they, the decision that they made, tell me more about that, right? Mm -hmm. Not would you do it again? Because it's easy to say yes or no. It makes people think and say, you know what? I would have bought a practice a little bit later. I rushed into practice ownership. I realized you can't return a practice like a jacket that's a Seinfeld joke. You can't return a dental practice out of spite, like the jacket in Seinfeld. Nope. And I just think that that's so important, whether to what you do with financial planning, to family plan. I mean, we have 50% female dentists or more. So having a child impacts your practice ownership journey. You know, a practice is like a child that never grows up. So, I mean, it's like magic. If you have two of them at the same time. One human one, one practice. I say to these nice female dentists, I go, that's going to be a really tough year of your life. So, you know, maybe you want to strategize this in a different way. So those are some of the things I really like to talk about in the four major decisions. Hey, we've hit on a lot of stuff. Anything that I haven't touched on that you would like to, to make sure that you mention or you think is important to convey to the audience? One thing I like to share, and I love doing these podcasts, really appreciate having, having me on is how we communicate with people really determines our success in life. You know, there's two content pieces. How to Sell by Daniel Pink is one of my favorite books, or To Sell as Human by Daniel Pink is one of my favorite books. Dentists have a very weird feeling about talking about money with people, and I think it messes up their entire life. Dental school charges you a lot of money, but they don't teach you to talk about money. The second is How to Speak by Patrick Winston. So I can do like two things well, like eat nachos and do public speaking. I've taken a tremendous amount of public speaking courses. I'm not a professional speaker, but in dentistry, I might be fairly close to one of our type top ones with that. I don't know if there's rankings. I listen to How to Speak by Patrick Winston before every big performance I have because it reminds me how to get your idea across, how to build a fence around your idea. So whether you're a dental student, whether you're someone who works with dentists, whether you're a parent, How to Speak by Patrick Winston, Google it on YouTube and watch it. It's one of the best pieces of content for interacting with human beings, especially finding jobs. So those are the two things I would add. The name of the podcast is Dentist Puns and Money. Are you ready with your best dental joke? Yeah, my best dental joke is this, okay? You make it weird, dentists. So you're, this might not resonate with you, Sean, but your dental people listening will. Okay. When you're in your dental operatory and one of your patients doesn't have a filling on the tooth in front of where they're missing a tooth or the tooth in the back, what do you call those teeth without fillings to a 78-year-old woman on Tuesday morning, Sean? So we are trained in dental school to call those teeth virgin teeth. Does that make you feel comfortable? Virgin teeth. So you are making people feel very weird calling their teeth virgins. So my joke to you is stop calling teeth virgins and making Millie feel weird on Tuesday at 1030 a.m. before she goes to the senior center's lunch, 11 a.m. and start calling them teeth without a filling, teeth, teeth without filling. So stop saying virgin. Stop making people feel weird. That's my dental jerk. I will, I will avoid the V word as well, uh, yeah. moving forward within dentistry. Uh, but for those that are, for those that are interested in, uh, finding more about, uh, you and your companies, uh, what's the best way to get in touch, Dr. Nacho? Two, two ways. So dentalnachos.com and dentistjobconnect.com are two simple websites that will direct you. But one of my idols, Gary Vader, Chuck, Gary V, I was at the beach about two years ago and I saw he started a text platform through community and I was like, this is amazing. So I have a text platform. If people are text nachos to 215-543-6454, they text the word nachos to 215-543-6454. They get a $143 gift from me, which is uh, 143 was Mr. Rogers' favorite number. I love you. I love Mr. Rogers. So that text community, I would love for you to text me, ask me a question anything you would like to know, if I can help you in any way, I'm here to be your dentisting friend. I think we need a community that shares and cares more. And I want to be part of that. That is Dr. Paul Goodman, Dr. Nacho of Dentist Job Connect and Dental Nachos. Dr. Paul, thank you for sharing your 
expertise and for being a guest on Dentists, Puns, and Money. Thanks, John. Really appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Dentists, Puns, and Money. For more information about my day job, which is guiding dentists to their financial off-ramp from active practice, you can visit DentistExit.com. And there, you can find more information about us, sign up for our email newsletter, or schedule a discovery call with Sean. And that's me. If you've enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review and rating on Apple Podcasts, and also please share the podcast with your friends and colleagues. As for the boring legal stuff, Dentist Exit Planning and Terrell Advisors LLC is a registered investment advisor. The information presented should not be interpreted or construed as investment, legal, tax, financial planning, or wealth management advice. It does not substitute for personalized investment or financial planning from Dentist Exit Planning or Terrell Advisors, LLC. This podcast conveys the views and opinions of Sean Terrell, and the information herein should not be considered a solicitation to engage in a particular investment or financial planning strategy. Information presented is for educational purposes only, and past performance is not indicative of future results.